What's going on guys, my name's Theoatrix and welcome to a range of useful tips and tricks for the Trailblazer League. These tips are somewhat obscure and I'd expect that most players don't know all of these, but if you've been grinding out the league, you may know a fair few of them, but definitely not all of them. Over 70% of you guys watching aren't subscribed to my channel, so if you enjoy my content, be sure to subscribe to help me reach 200k. Let's get into it. In most NPC stores across the Trailblazer League, the stock replenishes when you close the shop and reopen it. This is very useful for buying seeds for birdhouse runs. Let's say you're thieving from master farmers and need food, you can trade Fortunato for jugs of wine and close then reopen the store to get more straight away. A lot of newer players to the league had troubles working out how to get farming tools in Miss the Lynn. Well, you can talk to any gardener that you pay to watch over your crops and ask them if they have anything for sale. They have farming tools and compost ready to sell, but for a higher price than farming stores. But it's still a great way to get them in the early game. In the league, the Nightmare Zone is not open to play, but you can buy Nightmare Zone points with GP at a rate of one point per GP. To do this, you just need to talk to Dominic and you can enter how much GP you want to exchange. Just so you know, Iron Men can't buy any item rewards except for redirection scrolls. So you can't get herb boxes, seaweed, or anything like that. You can only get imbues and scrolls of redirection. All of the tier 1 relics are good in their own way, but Endless Harvest saves the most time in the long run. Endless Harvest focuses on the gathering skills, and skills like mining, woodcutting, and fishing are all fairly slow. Endless Harvest doubles their XP rate on top of the already existing XP multipliers, because you get double the resources and you get the XP for both of the resources. Production Master does speed up the processing skills, but they're already fast skills like smithing and crafting are already at least three to four times as fast as mining or fishing. Skilling Prodigy does allow you to access methods earlier, which is useful for the early game, but at higher levels, it's not all that useful. With Endless Harvest, you can also AFK for a long time at a range of different methods. You can do Rune Mysteries and endlessly mine at the Rune Essence Mine. If you unlock Mauritania and complete Sins of the Father, the Blisterwood Tree in Darkmire can be cut constantly AFK since the tree never falls down. The same can be done with Karambwan Fishing since the fishing spots never move. This leads me to the next and that is about relic synergy, which means how multiple relics complement each other. If you combine Endless Harvest with Infernal Gathering, a lot of these AFK methods become even more powerful. For example, with Karambwan Fishing, all of the Karambwans will automatically be cooked and sent to your bank as you catch them, which gives you immense amounts of cooking and fishing XP at the same time. There's also some negative synergy between relics. Choosing Production Master paired with Infernal Gathering can be counterintuitive. For example, the pickaxe you get from Infernal Gathering will automatically smelt the ores that you mine into bars. This removes the benefit of Production Master, where you can process all of those ores at once. Regarding Tier 2 Relics, Last Recall is the best one to choose by a long shot. Last Recall allows you to teleport back to the location that you teleported from. And with that, there are some huge skilling and quality of life benefits. With at least the Ardy Cloak 1, you can teleport right near an altar. With Last Recall, this means you can be doing your Slayer task somewhere, then teleport with the Ardy Cloak right to the altar, and use recall straight back to where you were slaying. So this essentially gives you unlimited free prayer points. With rune crafting, you can craft your runes and then teleport to a bank, like with a dueling ring to Castle Wars, then instantly teleport right back to the rune crafting altar with recall. And that speeds up rune crafting by a mile. The ham storerooms are a great way to make money as an Iron Man. Well, in a recent video, I talked about a very useful external Runelite plugin that you should use when you're thieving from there. To install external plugins, you go to the Plugins tab on Runelite and scroll all the way to the bottom where it says Plugin Hub. 
The Ham Storerooms plugin tells you which chests you can open with the keys that you have. It can be hard to distinguish and remember which key opens what. Another plugin perfect for the League is Quest Helper. This plugin essentially takes you through an entire quest, every step of the way, highlighting where you need to click and go. This is faster than following a guide, and also a lot easier to comprehend with quests that have puzzles. It doesn't have every quest, but it has most of the ones available in the League, so it's definitely a must use. I spoke about this one in my recent Leagues video, but there's a program called Team Player 4 that allows you to have two mice on one screen by plugging in a second mouse. This is perfect for thieving training, since you can have one mouse spam clicking on one hand, and with the other mouse you can do something else, like play a separate account on the main game, or do some work, or browse the internet. So yeah, that one's Team Player 4. High Alchemy is a great way to make money from Slayer Drops, but you should always keep in mind selling to shops. A lot of stores across RuneScape buy items for higher than their alchemy value. For example, a ruby necklace high alks for 1,305 GP, whereas if you take it to the jewelry store in Port Sarim, they buy it for 1,522. There's also a range of general stores that buy for higher than alk value. There's one in Bandit Camp that pays more, there's one in the Rogue's Den, and also the Karumja General Store, which is more profitable if you wear Karumja gloves. It's a good idea to save your jewellery when it reaches one charge left. If you're using a ring of duelling, for example, and then stop at one charge before it degrades, you can take it to a general store and sell it for a fair chunk of money instead of making it disappear into nothing. When the Dr. Jekyll random event pops up, if you have a Torstol with you in your inventory, and you talk to him, he gives you a Stamina Potion. This can be used to make a rejuvenation pool in your house without having the herb law requirement to make a Stamina Potion. Be sure to always pick up and keep your long and curved bones. Taking them to Barlak in Dorgesh Khan nets a huge amount of experience per bone, but you should hold the bones until you reach the 16 times multiplier, because then the long bones will give you 72,000 construction XP and curved bones give a whopping 108k. The last tip is more for beginners or people just starting out on the league, Count Check in the Lumbridge Graveyard still offers a free teleport to the Stronghold of Security within the League. This can save you running there to get your 10k. Within the Stronghold, you can spam click the doors to avoid having to answer questions as long as you have two-factor authentication. So that's a range of useful tips and tricks for the Trailblazer League. If you want a gaming mousepad or a poster, you should check out my merch store. There's a range of mousepad designs in stock. If you learned something interesting today, be sure to leave a like on the video. And if you're new around here, subscribe for more old school RuneScape content. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.